My name is Iche Yaro on my view with Iche Yaro. Today we want to talk about a Nigerian, a public servant that is now engulfed with a legal battle with the federal government. His name is Godwin Ifanyi Emefele, CFR. Godwin Ifanyi Emefele is a native of Abo, Delta State, born on the 4th of August 1961. He is an economist and a banker. He served as governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria from June 4th, 2014 to June 9th, 2023. He was appointed by former President Gulag Jonathan and suspended by President Bola Tinubu. Godwin Emefele took over from Sarah, Sarah Alade, in an, who was in an acting capacity before, then the current governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Fola Shadun Shunubu, is the one that just took over from Godwin Ifanyi Emefele. So, Godwin Ifanyi Emefele is in the limelight now. So, we'll just briefly talk about him from when he started his career till now that you know. He attended the University of Nigeria and Suka, and he was top of his class in the banking and finance in 1984. He had it MSc in UNN. He attended Stanford and Harvard in 2004. Worked as a lecturer and researcher with the University of Nigeria and Suka. He also worked as a lecturer with the University of Port Harcourt. He also worked with Vodafone. He attained heights with Zenith Bank and Asian Microfinance Bank before moving to the Apex Bank, the CBN. Godwin Ifanyi Emefile is also a politician. This was confirmed when he bought the APC presidential ticket in 2022. When he was confronted with this information of vying for the highest office in the land, he denied it via a tweet. But in a twist of faith, Godwin Emefile approached the Federal High Court, asking the court to stop the um, office of the Attorney General and the INEC from preventing him from vying for the office. So it was confirmed that he bought form and vied for the office, though unsuccessful. In 2022, the CBN under Godwin Emefele announced that it would resign the 200 naira, 500 naira, and the 1000 naira notes, and earlier planned to face out the old note by January 31st, 2023. But it was not to be as the new notes were not in circulation, and then that was suspended as approved by the President of the Federal Republic as he then was Muhammad Buhari, and it was extended to February 10th, 2023. This was when most Nigerians started hearing about the man and his disobedience to court order. I'll tell you more. In another development, on February 3rd, three states, Kaduna State, Kogi State, and Zamfara State, sued the federal government for the reversal of the policy due to the suffering and scarcity of the Naira notes. Now here we begin to start. This is the road to the end. The court responded by issuing an interim order suspending the implementation and directed that the old and the new nodes should continue to circulate. We all know this. Pending the resolution of the matter. But the CBA under Godwin, Ifani Emefele, CFR, ignored the order, insisting that the old notes were no longer a legal tender. Six other states applied to join as plaintiff in the matter during hearing on February 22nd. That was three days to the national election, and that that is that was held on February 25th, 2023. The then APC president, presidential candidate, and now President Bola Tinubu openly accused Godwin Emefiele of trying to witch hunt him with the police. This is where the problem between the embattled former CBN governor and the current president started. The president and the presidential candidate then made this known in Nogo State while he was on campaign. During that period, there were several disobedience orders and counter orders while Nigerians suffered cash crunch, poor economy, and all forms of problems associated with liquidity and cash. 
Just like Emefili, on February 16th, former President Muhammad Ubarri, in disobedience to the order of court, also insisted that the old notes were no longer a legal tender. Same day, former Kaduna State Governor Nasir Erfai ordered citizens of Kaduna State to go about their normal business using the old notes and new notes. Fast forward to the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. On the 9th of June, 2023, as expected, President Bola Ahmed Tunubu suspended governor, former governor of Central Bank, Godwin Emefeli, and directed that all government properties and information and documents in his possession should be handed over to the deputy governor in charge of operations. You recall that DSS had earlier accused Mr. Emefeli of financial terrorism. There were a call in almost all platforms for his resignation because of his involvement in police, politics and anti-people activities, especially the Naira redesign. But who said? Mefele didn't resign. Mefele was finally arrested on the 9th of June in Lagos by the DSS and flown to Abuja. President Bola Tinubu, while speaking in France, said the financial system was rotten under Godwin Emefiele. Surprisingly, Godwin Emefiele was finally arrested on the 25th of July, 2023. Guess what the charge is? Illegal possession of firearms. He was not arraigned for forest rent driving. He was not arraigned for the COVID-19 loan fraud. He was not arraigned over money spent with designing the Naira. He was not arraigned for causing pain to Nigerians. He was not arraigned for any financial crime, but illegal possession of firearms. Can you beat that? Mr. Emefile, having been arraigned before Justice Owebo, pleaded not guilty, not guilty for the charge brought against him, possession of firearms. Luckily for him, the justice granted him bail and that he should be in the custody of Nigerian Correctional Service. But <laughs> unfortunately, the DSS and the Nigerian Correctional Service men were involved in a free-for-all. Guess what was happening? There was rancor, there was fighting, and there was threats on what? Who should take custody of God in the field? Godwin Emefile, who have an issue, was at the helm of affairs, called the shots, he gave Naira to whoever he wants to give, and he was in charge today, being dragged here and there on who should take custody. It's a lesson for it's a lesson for those in authority. It's a lesson for everybody. When you are up there, please use your office to affect lives. Use your office to teach. Use your office to better the lot of other people. Don't use your office for self-aggrandizement. Don't use your office to break the law.